a story that concerns the four-day history of a major American scientific crisis. Salt Lake Community College and Summer Bear Life Balance Education presents part one of Michael Cretton's and Robert Estrain dramatized radio play. The documents and information presented here are soon to be made public, but they do not in any way jeopardize national security. In a letter to the President of the United States, Dr. Jeremy Stone wrote, In a true biological crisis, which our exploration of space could bring about, the present Lunar Receiving Laboratory might prove inadequate. I therefore urge the establishment of a facility to deal specifically with an extraterrestrial life form. The purpose of this facility would be to limit the dissemination of such an unknown organism from outer space and try to provide laboratories for its analysis. I recommend that this facility be located in an uninhabited region of the United States, that it utilize all known isolation techniques, and that it be equipped with a nuclear device for self-destruction in the event of an emergency. Yours, very truly, Jeremy Stone. Piedmont, New Mexico, population 68. Let's retrieve the satellite. Some joker must have seen it come down and collected himself a souvenir. Yeah. Only, you'd think they'd reported it to the police, or NASA, or the Army. Someone. Hey, see that? I didn't notice that before. That's crazy. I didn't know buzzards fly at night. That's what they look like. Here. Buzzards only come when something's dead. Well, I guess we better go in and have a look. Dagway Proving Ground, Utah. Scoop Mission Control. Yes, I'm reading. Over. We're about to enter the town of Piedmont to recover the satellite. Very good, Caper One. Leave your radio open. Roger. We're now inside the town. It's kind of spooky. I see a church steeple ahead on the left. It's quiet here. It's the damnedest thing. There's no sign of life. The signals from the satellite are getting very strong. Sir! Did you see that, Lieutenant? I see what crane? Over by the fence. It looks like a body. You're imagining things. Oh my. Sir, it's another one. You're right, it looks dead. Yes, sir. Shall I help stay in the van? Vandal Decker to Caper One. What's happening? We see bodies. Lots of them. Are you certain, Caper One? Yeah, cover all the court for certain. Your orders are proceed to satellite and retrieve. Roger, Vandal Decker. Stay at your stations. Hit that security button. Get me Major Mantic. Somehow, they don't hardly look dead, Lieutenant. They're all over. Must be done with them. Damn it. Get this call through. It's sort of like they just stopped in their tracks. Sir! Good lord. You see it? That thing in white. Yeah, it's coming toward us. It's just stepping over them, like... Yeah, it's coming toward us. Sir, I think we should get out of here! This is Major Manchek, Scooper Control Alpha 12. We need a flyby over Piedmont, New Mexico, infrared, a FLIR scan, all sectors. Don't to come direct to Scoop. Coming up on the town, Gunner. You see it? Roger, I see it. Okay, Gunner. Ready to roll? Ready. All yours, Gunner. Shoot it. What do you see? Man, I'm sad. I see bodies, bodies everywhere. They're lying in the streets, they're cross cars. Might as well get light to eat. I think we might have something to interest you tonight. First picture. This is an unusual shot. Anything warm appears white on the picture. Anything cold is black. Now then, you can see here that the buildings are dark. They are colder than the ground. As night comes on, the buildings give up their heat more rapidly. 
What are those white spots? There are more than 50, 40 or 50 of them on the photos. Those are bodies, some inside houses, some in the streets. They number 70. In the case of some of them, such as this one here, you can make out the Pauline's and head clearly. This body is lying flat in the street. As nearly as we can tell, this is an automobile. Notice it's got a bright white spot at one end. This means the motor is still running, still generating heat. That must be the van. The question now arises, are all these people dead? We cannot be certain about that. The body appears to be of different temperatures. 67 are rather cold, indicating death come time ago. We are warmer, two of those are in this car here. Our men, and who's the third? The third is rather puzzling. You see here, he's apparently standing or laying cold in the street. Observe that he is quite white and therefore quite warm. Our temperature scans indicate that he is about 95 degrees which is a little on the cold side, but probably attributable to the night air, next slide. It's moved! Exactly! This shot is from the second passage. The spot has moved approximately 20 yards. Next picture. Moved again! This is the presumptive conclusion. <coughs> Does that mean what you think you think? We have video of the target visualization of the one. I haven't reviewed them yet. Perhaps the pilot should narrate. Yes, sir. This is my first pass, east to west, at 11.08. We're looking from the left wing camera, which is running at 9.6 frames per second. As you can see, my altitude is falling rapidly. Straight ahead is the main street of the target. At this time, I'm right over the target, where I observed the casualties you see here. My estimate at the time was 75, sir. Now I'm coming back for my second run. The flares are already burning low, but you can see. That man looks alive to me, sir. Yes, he certainly does. I'm declaring a state of emergency. All personnel are restricted to base. Everything seen and heard in this room is top secret. Yes, yes sir. sir. This is a recording. State your name and your message and hang up. Major Arthur Manchik, Scoop Mission Control Alpha 12. I recommend calling a wildfire alert. We have evidence here of unnatural death caused by Scoop 7 returning to Earth. Time check 0147 inclusive. Top secret message follows. A wildfire alert has been called. Press blackout. Potential directed 712. Further notifications. The following American citizens placed on Zed Kappa status. Jeremy Stone. Ruth Levitt. Charles Dutton. Alexander Kirk. Mary Hall. Top secret clearance. Reconfirmed for Stone. Others in process. End of message. We'd like to see Dr. Jeremy Stone, please. I am Miss Stone. We are having a party. May I? Does that man have a gun? Ma'am, we must see Dr. Stone. What is this? Please call Dr. Stone to the door. Otherwise, we'll go get him. <laughs> Just a minute. May I see you, Jeremy? Jeremy, there are some army types in the hall, and two more outside with guns. They want to see you. Uh, I'll take care of it. Jeremy! If you knew about this, you I didn't, might have... I didn't, I didn't know. I'll explain later. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Stone. I'm Captain Morton. There's a fire, sir. No, uh, oh, oh, uh, I've got to leave. For Pete's sake, Jeremy, when will you be back? Uh, I'm not sure. The guns, is it... Mrs. Stone. It's our job to protect your husband. From now on, nothing must be allowed to happen to him. I'll be as safe as in your arms. Jeremy? Jeremy! Dad, something 
very peculiar has just happened, even for Jeremy. A few minutes ago... Dad, are you there? What's going on? This communication is being monitored. The connection has been broken for reasons of national security. You will be briefed at the appropriate time. Thank you for your cooperation, Mrs. Stone. San Francisco International Airport. I feel like royalty. The only passenger on a commercial flight? It was the first thing we could arrange, sir. Your file, sir. Okay, let's see here. From the file given to Dr. Stone, let's see. The Scoop Project is under the command of Major General Thomas C. Parks, U.S. Army Medical Service, Director of Biological Research Division. The purpose of the project contracts the Advanced Jet Laboratory of Wisconsin Polytechnic Institute in Madison is to collect any organisms that might exist in outer space. The program includes the study and evaluation of actual or potential injuries illness, or damage caused by new extraterrestrial forms of life, should any be discovered. The phone is for you, sir. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Major Manchek here. I just wanted to inform you that all members of your team have been cleared and are not being called in. Great. Good. Except for Professor Kerr. Wh wh He's in the hospital. What? You'll get complete details on everything when your team is assembled. I can't be deck to me at the worst time. the president's science advisor in Washington. Look, hun, there's a phone. Pick it up, call Robbie, tell him I burnt my draft card. Are you sick, ma'am? We have a physician on call. If the physician certifies that you are unable to no. continue. I'm fine. Relax. I'm going with you. Scapel. Hold it, Mary. Sorry to disturb you. Your orders are to break scrub. Orders? I've got a patient here ready to go. Kelly will take over for you. It's all arranged. You're expected in the surgeon's room in 30 seconds. Day 2, February 6th, 8 a.m. Okay, Gunner, hover over the main street and drop 
come back when we signal. If anything happens to us, well, you have your orders. That man over there, a coronary? I doubt it. Let's look around. Oh, Hall, take a look at this. Are you sure that isn't a coronary? No, coronaries are painful. They should grimace. The same with the pulmonary embolus. If it was fast, they wouldn't have time. Fast? These people were cut down in mid-stride. Up there, look. An Air Force jet. If we don't make it to wildfire, he'll see the helicopter does, or shoot it down. Well, for Gunner's sake, we'd better not slip up. Yeah, for Gunner's sake. Let's find the damn satellite. Here, look at this house, let's check it out. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. What, the family around the table? The kids playing ball, the shoppers, the man at the barber shop, they're all dead. Yeah, but even if you slit a man's throat, you're not going to get death this fast. Don't touch anything. Not until we have a better line on what we're dealing with. There's no marks on any of them, Stone. No. Well, she hung herself. There's a note on the cat. The day of judgment is at hand. Have mercy on my soul and to hell with all the others. Amen. Oh, that's delightful. Uh, senile, I think. This took time. Regardless of what made her do it, it took time. There's a chance someone's still alive. I wouldn't believe you could commit suicide that way. Toilet paper around his legs and head in the bathtub be surprised that most of them died instantly. A few of them did have time to go quietly nuts. Well, let's find the damn satellite. All right, there's the van. Look at his head. This injury, there isn't any bleeding. A cut like this, torn veins, broken capillaries, it should bleed like hell. Yeah. There's no blood on any of them. Get him out. We'll take this van. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You gotta go back up and then go to the left. Oh, we're so close. Bear right. I bet they took it to a doctor. There it is. Oh, the damn fool opened it. Yeah, because every country doctor should run his office like the Lunar Lab. How the hell was he supposed to know? Well, he might have asked somebody. It's a set anyway. He knows now, and so do 68 other people. I just hope there's something left. In a way, I kind of hope there isn't. Yeah, come on, help me with this. The capsule first, Hall. We've got about 40 minutes of oxygen left. Hey, have a look at his buttocks. Is... Okay, that, that's not funny. It's not meant to be. Normally, blood in a dead person goes to the lowest points. There should be marks of lividity. Do you see purplish marks on his butt? No, I don't see any lividity in that butt. No, careful with that scalpel. Don't puncture the suit. You know what I'm doing? Well, I'll be damned. No wonder they didn't bleed. It's clotted through the entire system. Five quarts of blood just turned into powder. In theory, I suppose a single organism could do it. In fact, there isn't a single organism on Earth. You mean, there didn't used to be. You know, there was that report from the flybys in those videos of a man alive down here. One man in white robes. Do you think he's still alive? Well, I wonder because if some people survived longer than others, long enough to dedicate a taped speech or arrange a hanging, mm -hmm. 
you'd have to ask yourself if there is someone in the town that is still alive. Yeah. Did you hear that? Have we lost our minds? No, no, we heard it all right. It's a baby. It's scared. Poor thing, it's probably hungry. Not very old, couldn't be more than six months. Is it a he or a she? A he. And he needs to be changed and fed. There's probably a formula in the kitchen. Don't feed it. He hasn't eaten in at least 12 hours. We don't do anything until we get that kid into a controlled situation. Maybe feeding it is part of the disease process. Maybe those who hadn't eaten lasted the longest. Whatever it is, with our oxygen running out, we can't take a chance. This is a very important development. It's a major break for us, and we've got to protect it. I think we should go back immediately. Fine. Doesn't matter. We have something much more valuable than anything we could have hoped to find. We have a survivor. Yeah. Too bad he can't tell us what happened. Maybe he can. If he lives, let's get into the helicopter. There goes our patient. Halt behind you. You, you did it. Give me that knife. You're not human. Everyone's dead. <sighs> town is finished. No more. We have good evidence for an unusual process of work. Contaminated beyond Can all... Careful, this is an open transmission. I'm aware of that, Manichek. Order up a 712. Only the president. Precisely. Get on it. The town must be neutralized immediately. You have the satellite? Yeah, we got it. Directive 712 is part of the final wildfire protocol for action in the event of a biological emergency. It calls for the placement of a limited nuclear weapon at the site of exposure of extraterrestrial life. Is it too late to contain the biological emergency? Thank you for listening to Salt Lake Community College and Summer Barrier Life Balance Education's presentation of part one of Michael Crichton's Andromeda String, Dramatized Radio Play. Listen next time and find out.